Good morning, hello, good day, wherever you are. This is my um, quick demo on to show you how I do my now famous hand-painted decorated illuminated bottles. Um, this is just a quick example of some of the ones I've oh, done. The ones I've done over the years. They are. They come in all shapes, all sizes. You're only limited by your imagination and your ability to paint. But I can show you shortcuts if you aren't a particularly good artist and want to do other ways of other ways of doing it. Right. First of all, you need an empty bottle. It needs to be well cleaned, um, preferably with a, a bleach etc. to get off any grease so that the acrylics stand a chance of sticking. Notoriously difficult to paint on glass with just ordinary acrylic paints, literally ordinary acrylic paints. You need ribbon for finishing it off. These are very important. They're cork battery lights. They operate by three LR44 batteries which are housed in the imitation cork and switched on and off by the cork battery. But they are the piston resistance of this, if you pardon my expression, I can't say that. Anyway, to cut a long story short, that's the finished product. You need an empty bottle, acrylic paints, you need ribbon, cork battery lights, which you can buy off of several online shopping sites for around about £1.20, £1.50 each. You can buy them in big packs. You also need a bottle, not necessarily this make, others are available, of Duraclear, which is a polyurethane gloss varnish. That will seal it completely for you afterwards. That's vital or it will scratch off. Now, when you've chosen the design you want to do, and if you're not sure what you want to paint, my suggestion is that you go and find yourself a stencil or get some ideas online or whatever. Don't copy other people's so. though. Get your bottle, quite simply like this. This is one I prepared earlier. Ordinary wine bottle. Now, I've tried various ways from some of my designs I can I can just hand paint on because I've done so many of them. If you've got something more intricate, my suggestion, and I find this works better than anything, is to use these. They're the liquid chalk marker pens. You can buy them all, all different makes and online. And the joy of these is you can Draw on your design. If you don't like it, they quite simply rub off, and that's been on for two or three days. But the other joy is, as you paint over it with the acrylic paint, this stuff dissolves. Try and do it in more or less the right colour, otherwise it can powder into the paint, and you don't see it. If you try anything else, what happens is, as you paint, that colour will stay behind the paint, and then it looks pretty horrible through the glass because you can see the lines drawn through the glass. So this is liquid chalk, and it's a, it dissolves with the water from the paint and disappears. Okay, guys, that's the first stage, bits and bobs. I'll show you some more later. Okay, stage two. There's my scrubby old palette full of paints, acrylic paints. And just to prove the point, they're not glass paints, they're ordinary acrylic paints. I do use um, iridescent metallic gold silvers to put onto the bottles afterwards to give them a bit of zing. You can buy and put on the embellishments that you get for birthday cards with PVA glue if you want. They do come off sometimes. So I now prefer to use just the paints to make them shine that way. Brushes are the most important thing. You need a soft brush. One that isn't going to scrub the paint off when you put it on. See, that one is quite t quite hard, and that is, is no good for keeping the paint on to the actual subject. Now, that is a nice, soft, flexible paintbrush that will just smoothly glide the paint onto the glass rather than scrubbing it off. You need your water. You need your scrubby old paper, which I'm afraid I use a lot of because I'm very messy. Your palette. And you're away to go.
Right, I've got my nice soft pen, uh, paintbrush here. It's a lovely brush. It's well used, as you can see, well hammered. And basically, I have all the different yarns I'm going to need. Now, this is the bit I need to show you. Obviously, I'm not going to bore you with all the process of painting, painting. Take a undiluted dollop of the colour, the base colour. You need to get your base colour on first. Now, this is why I say you need to use a soft paintbrush. Purely because you will take it off if you don't. And don't worry about making it look thick. What you've got to do initially is, quite simply, colour in. Colour in and let that area go dry. That will go dry enough, probably even on a winter's day, in about 10 minutes. It doesn't take any longer than that because acrylic, as you know, and especially on glass, it can't be absorbed. It just air dries very, very quickly. It doesn't have to be perfectly dry. But it has to be so that you don't take it off when you're putting on all your final finishing colours and how to get it right. So you colour it all in. I'll stop now. And I'll come back to the next stage in a minute and let it dry. Okay. I've um, given it one coat. I'm now giving it a second coat. And as you can see, this is now going on. Had I not put the initial coat on, I call that my keying coat, it gives the acrylic something to key on to. And you can then start getting a nice dense solid colouring. Now again, this is only the second coat. People think these are quick, well they're quick for me now, but easy to do. You've got to have a lot of patience because you, you can't just paint straight on and get a finished job. And then over here, another coat and another coat. You can start doing the fancy work now. I put in other shades in, um, such as a bit of yellow ochre here. I do a lot of 3D work with my painting, and the way I do that is to put shadows in. I always do the outer stuff first so that you can get the effect and then I'll put the, the trumpet in that on afterwards. That is just the basic shading. Now, this is going to take several more coats. You've got to just keep working, putting your colours in, all the different colours you want to put in. But one of the most important things I do with my paint is I use fluorescent. And the fluorescent paint, we'll just start making that sing out like this. And again, it's a case of being patient, layering it and painting it. Like any other painting you do. But as you can see, from this one petal, the more I'm putting on, so the more it's starting to sing out to you. Okay, I'm now going to go away. I'm going to paint this bottle and I'll come back when I've finished and show you the final touches. Okay, I've finished painting the bottle. It's taken me a long time, but this was this is a fiddly one. Now, overnight you should normally leave it. I'm just going to do a little bit to show you what, what you do. Varnish-wise, obviously as I said before, polyurethane. I, I use a, a fan brush, but you can use what you like, as long as it's a fairly soft brush. And the secret of varnishing is gently, very, very gently, just stroke it. Don't put a whole lot on. What you need to do is just go over the edges, like this, so that you're sealing it in. Don't put too much on. Now, if you put too much on, wipe the excess off with your fingers doesn't matter if it goes over the edge a little bit but if you put too much on what's going to happen is the paint is going to crack and slide so to recap you varnish with a very light amount of your brush 
and you do very gentle strokes till it's all done. I'm not going to do this whole thing because I really want to let it stop another 24 hours before I, I varnish it because it's um, very thick paint and I want it to dry right out. These are the lights. You buy them in packs of 6 to 10. They come with the batteries in. You actually take them out, unroll them, pop them in your bottle, pop the cork in the top and you're ready to go. And of course, the most important thing afterwards is to stick a nice ribbon on the top. And then at the end of the day, you should end up with some nice decorated bottle. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.